everyone. I'm uh, I'm V from TJV. Uh, you might know me because I appear regularly on this blog. You are hopefully watching this video on, and um, I I want to say something um, which I would have to move my browser window a little down so it will be visible. I really like Thursa's blogs. She's got two that I know of. One is SL Arts Parks, which is conveniently at slartsparks.blogspot.com. And the other one is um, Pinks from the Afterlife, uh, which is Pinks from the Afterlife.blogspot.com. And um, I don't just love them because I've been featured on them on occasion um, yeah and you know that's nice I, I don't I don't I don't I'd say I hate you if you feature me on your blog but if you want to feature me on your blog by all means please please feature me I'm I'm easy you know I'm I'm not you know easy I'm just I'm just cool with it I'm just um here's my name look um Anyway, um, but I really like to read her. I mean, you don't make it to to my feet. This is these are my feet, um, reader. Just because I I'm following you. I, I mean, you don't make it into a feed reader because just because I want to see if if you feature me. I mean, that would be weird. Maybe you do. I I I don't. I, I don't know anything about you, so I don't want to assume that you do. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, this is Pink's from the Afterlife. Uh, but I really like the way she's writing, and the the problem is that the good blogs never get any comments. Um, which is not to say that she doesn't get any comments. You know, she's she obviously does, and and obviously the TJV even gets comments even to my my own surprise on, on the weirdest things, you know, the things that I think might get any comments never do, and the things that I think nobody will ever read kind of get some weird comment that will try to sell me some Viagra or, or hook me up with a Russian lady that I've never met in my life but um, that, that's okay um, so, um, you know and I, I don't I don't really bother much about comments um, I, I think they're great and I'll I like to receive feedback but it's not that my my um, my sense of self is depending on comments but I, my point is Thursa is not getting you know I'm rambling this is it's it's 3 46 a.m. here and I'm kind of tired but I I, I had a long day at work and I'm just just kind of rambling right now, and uh, so uh, uh, my point is that Thursa is not getting nearly as much uh, readers as, as she deserves, because um, uh, it is this Blogspot, you know. I think Blogspot is is I, I don't want to say anything about blogs, but if you want to use blogs, but it is fine. You you're fine. Uh, I respect your anyone's choice of the blogging service they use. Uh, I just believe Blogspot is made in the seventh circle of hell, and I think uh, uh, you know it's it's where 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 JavaScripts go to die. Uh, and and I really don't know what it is because this is an a, a regular by all by all appearances a regular website. It's just that whenever I open the blog, but blog, it's, it doesn't have to be this one. It can be anyone. I'm, I'm just, it's just. And I don't have a small computer, but it really, I can feel the impact on the performance of the browser. That's what I'm saying. So I really don't know what it is, and um, but it's it's an any any blogspot blog i've never never seen anything like it it doesn't happen with wordpress unless you have a wordpress blog that is so overloaded with with plugins and and stuff that that it'll just 
slow down to crawl, which actually happened to open some creations a while back, and I kind of, re you know, worked at that. But um, look, it, it opens a new page. What what sensible software makes d does that? I mean, opening if you want to comment, opening a new page, so you actually have to. It doesn't even show the original post. So if, if I really wanted to annoy someone. I think I, I, I could do that. If I really wanted to annoy someone, I make them switch between two browser pages all the time to to leave a comment. But why would anyone do that? Any okay. Um The point is she wrote today I guess yesterday, huh? That's three AM. Okay. So yesterday a really nice thing about um and I, re I recommend you read it. I mean, this is just paraphrasing me about the things that leave Second Life. And um, as with many other things, I do absolutely agree with her. And I, <laughs> one of the reasons why I do enjoy reading Thursa's blogs is that she's one of the few people who really got the their, their shit together. And I, I, I hate to say this because. You know, I don't want to slander anyone or, or anything, but uh, a lot of people I've met on on the internet and in Second Life really don't have their shit together, but Thursa does. And um, she's. She, she she's talking about things that leave second life because we all I mean we've all been there and if you haven't been there then you're gonna get there um, land in second life isn't cheap and without land in second life you really have no permanent no, no you only get about 25% of, of your complete enjoyment of second life unless you are fine without land but land is really the thing that will allow you to express yourself or leave a mark on the land that everyone can see, even if you're not online. So land is, is your own playground. And having land in Second Life is really not cheap. Uh, a, a, a complete region is... Um, if you're on the mainland, two hundred dollars a month. If you are renting a private region, which is basically the only difference between a private region and a mainland region, is that you have you can terraform it any way you want, and you don't have any neighbors. Uh, private regions are three hundred dollars a month, and uh, I mean that's a lot of money. People, you know, can can rent a place for that. I mean, a, a real place, uh, an apartment. So um, this is not something that you just pay lightly for, uh, you know. And in contrast, uh, land and open sim. I mean, I have a, a server that runs like thirty regions right now. I don't even know. I I, I did don't count them uh, for thirty euros a month. So there's a, you know a small difference. And um, because land is so expensive in Second Life, and because the economy is in the gutter, and we are all struggling, and and, and and unless you're Rupert Murdoch, obviously if you're Rupert Murdoch, you're not struggling, and you by all means should buy Second Life and give everyone free land. But other than that, we are all struggling, and, and and nobody really wants to pay for land anymore. So um, quite a lot of projects up apparently that have been sponsored by generous people who wanted to give to the community have been cancelled and uh, their land that here is not being paid for and so they have had to pull out of Second Life. I was talking about that in the TGIB um, uh, retrospect that we made last year, the end of last year, 
and you know nobody watched that really but um we visited a few things that have been gone from second live and um it's quite sad but um as Thursa rightly says if everybody kind of thinks they're a special case and um hopes that they they are work because it is so important to the community to second life as a whole to this to linden lab or whoever will find sponsorship or we will get i don't know donations enough to be helped by the community and sadly a lot of things don't and um i am in two minds about this one is that i'm really really sad actually about any build that is gone from second life i mean not just the great artistic things like uh, am radios installations or star axes uh, magic wand i think there are still people who have a magic wand from him but um or I don't know the Templum member Exoscurum or the um, um, insert glorious region here. Um, <clears throat> I'm really sad about any region that has to close because mainly because it is actually. not necessary technically not necessary that things have to vanish from the place of the virtual worlds at all they you know exist as data on a server and anything that exists as data on a server can be copied and saved to somewhere else the only reason why it, it's not being done is because of legalese and so um <clears throat> really the one thing i i want to say is there is something there are a lot of things that opensim has um over a second life but one of the main 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 important things is that you can save your creations in opensim and you can save them completely you can save the whole region if you want and reload it anytime from hard disk from your usb stick from a floppy disk if you want i don't even know if people still remember what a floppy disk is but um it is basically is what it what it sounds like it is a disk that is kind of floppy uh, unless it was a three and a half inch then it isn't floppy at all it's kind of hard um but um you can save your creations and um you know other than land being really cheap this is a great way to just uh you know change your stuff on a whim and um restore it at a later time i'm i can go and demonstrate this um a little <clears throat> and um I think that is really, really important to um, for for virtual worlds as a whole, and for creators because you have to remember that everything you do in Second Life is actually not really yours, even though it's so on the paper and it feels like it. It can vanish at any time or you can you know not be able to afford it anymore and then it's gone 
Whereas things that have an open sim on your own server or even on someone else's server that you kind of control and that can give you backups are more yours than they would be in Second Live. Um, the region here is um, one that I've made. It's called the Path. And let's Let's remove it. I gotta log into my OpenSim server. So, um, we are on the region that is called Ever 7. This is the path. The other regions are part of a terrain I was testing. And, um, if I want to save a region, the open sim command is save or R. Then you give the path to the folder you want to save it in and call this path save OIR. And then OpenSim will basically all write the whole um, terrain, all objects on the sim, everything, the contents of the objects to an OIR, which is short for an OpenSim archive file. And, um, and yeah, well, leave it there, so that when you go and um, when you remove the scene, um, when you load an OAR into a scene into a region, it will first remove all the objects from the previous. Um, in the thing that was there, you can see it. What it does here in the background. The trees are vanishing, the terrain gets reverted. items here that are being removed. This is automatic. I'm not doing anything. I'm just an avatar floating actually in the next region witnessing the destruction of this tiny little world. Okay, and um, there we go. And if you want to have it back, um, what was it? Path save OER. You can just reload it again, and it will rebuild your scene just the way it was. So I, I hope it's obvious what kind of. Um, benefits this simple functionality actually has to offer uh, for anyone, for artists, for creators, for shop owners, for anyone who who really wants to use virtual worlds. And um, I mean, not only can you save it, you can also share your your stuff. You can, if you have made a great region, you can just 
give it to friends or put it on the on the web for anyone to load it into their own OpenSim. Um, but the, the reason why I'm in two minds about this is that um, really I don't think um, anyone should ask rightfully so again Linden Lab to sponsor them because their region is so important to to Second Live. I think when you when you join Second Live and you you've been there for a while, you know you know the game. You know how it works. You know the prices. You know the the, the drivel. You know how how things are being handled when they're gone, and that's just what you signed up for. And there is, you know, from Linden Lab's perspective, if they ever start picking one person in Second Live and, and giving them free land or a better price for their land or kind of sponsoring their installation, then that's going to create a whole lot of a mess of a relationship between Linden Lab and that person. And um, rightfully so, other people might come along and say, well, what about my th my stuff? I think my stuff is just as awesome and, and just as important for Second Live as anyone else's. So um, I don't think Linden Up will ever, ever um, pay for someone else's sim just because they can't afford it anymore. There is no shortage of creativity and of great sims in Second Live. So a few sims, a few art installations going down, even if they're the most amazing, even if even if they're Nemo or Bryn O's installations or the Second Life Shakespeare community, it will not it will not be the end of Second Life and I don't think it will impact Linden Lab's revenues in the very least. Um so, bottom line is, go read Thursa's blogs, be informed, she features a lot of very nice stories, a lot of great art, and uh, she's got a very witty way to write, they are at slartsparks.blogspot.com and at pingsfromtheafterlife.blogspot.com, and um, try out OpenSim. Um, this is the place where things work. Thank you very much.